and uh, yeah, sad loss to the people of Bristol. Uh, I've just driven you round sort of the local area so people can get a flavour of just how close industry in the port is yeah. to you know the houses within Avonmouth. Okay. What we'll do is we'll go on a, a quick tour of Avonmouth village. So, um, we're going to take a right into Port View, and this road runs the other side of the railway to the top of Avonmouth. And you'll see it's not a very big village. How many people live there? Ian? About 15,000, I believe. Okay. So not tiny, but like three and a half thousand, four thousand different properties. Some large HMOs, some are Victorian terrace, mm -hmm. um, House of the Masonic. We're coming up to you now, the Masons. Like oh, the corner here. Huh? Yeah, so these are basically the lick spittles of the merchant venturers. Um, of Bristol and other such organisations, they're the people that are on the ground doing the charity work. Undoubtedly tied up with organisations like, um, oh, what are they called? Uh, Sue Turner, the indivisible Sue Turner when she left the port. Who's that? Uh, she was the communications director for the port until. Uh, the 2012 fly infestation where she spectacularly mishandled public opinion. Mm. Um, so she had to leave her three day a week job and then she turned up as a CEO of the Quartet Foundation. Now the Quartet Foundation, uh, sorry just to, as an aside, so you've got industrial on one side and you've got housing on the other. Um, so the Quartet Foundation are uh, the charitable distribution arm of the merchant ventures of Bristol so they deal with you know hundreds of millions of pounds of trust funds and they disperse those to organizations involved in charitable works mm -hmm. which is you know laudable um, but they do take a 12 and a half percent cut off the top you know, which is quite a sizable administrative fee if you like mm -hmm. you know and uh, they do control quite rigorously which organizations get charitable funding and which don't, so they effectively control the third sector and um, you'll find lots of interested councillors and local business people that sit on the boards of these mm. charitable organisations and get large dispensation of money. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm of the opinion that most of the political establishment in Bristol are corrupt and, and to be fair I haven't seen much to convince me of otherwise. So the uh, local MPs for this area are... You've got Darren Jones, is Bristol North West local MP. Labour. Uh, ostensibly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I met Darren when he came to my house with Marvin Reese back in, it was 2012, I think it was, late 2012, as they were gearing up to get rid of Ferguson and Charlotte Leslie. And uh, they came to my house, and I took them on the tour, I'm about to take you on. Uh, it lasted about three hours, but hopefully we'll, we'll refine yeah. it somewhat. Yeah. Uh, showing you some of the major installations and the problems that we have. Okay. I mean, because when I spoke to you uh, about making this video, I was saying to you about calling it What's Changed. Kind of looking, reflecting back on what Steve had shown me three years ago, or yeah. over three years ago now, and asking you the question, what what's changed, what's what's become an issue, what is still an issue, etc. You know. I can tell you what's changed. Yeah. Um, Bristol City Council uh, Chief Planning Officer had to admit to me that uh, a lot of the developments that have gone under the docks under permitted development rules actually should have gone through planning permission um, and didn't. And these were oversights, a number of them, mm. by certain planning officers, one of which was Angelo Calabresi, um, who I know Steve talked to you about. Mm. Um, apparently, Angelo no longer looks after applications for. So Bristol North West, he's been moved on to other duties, um, and I think that was because the council were afraid that you know people were saying, "How is it the same officer is, is making these mistakes that are allowing hundreds of millions of pounds worth of developments uh, with no oversight and no formal planning process mm. um, by a misapplication of the Town and Country Planning Act?" You know, these people get paid a lot of money, mm. so we've just come in a big circle around from um, uh, Portley Road. Um, from the bisection of Avonmouth or the railway lines 
uh, and we're just coming back down through the main park. Now at the end of this you'll see uh, the day group installation, you, you asked me what's changed, Yeah. Uh, the day group has appeared um, without planning permission strangely enough. Uh, I fought a public inquiry. Who are the day group? The day group. What are, do they do? Uh, they're aggregates. Uh, they're based out of Brentford and London. Okay. Um, but they've got uh, depots all over the place, and because of the uh, proximity on the port to companies like Hans and Cement, and um, uh, there are a number of uh, aggregate importers, exporters, etc. That's where they're based here. But what mm. what they do. Um, and you see, if you see the, the white conveyor belt, yeah. the big green warehouse behind. I mean, this is memory lane for me a little bit because this is where <laughs> Steve first drove me uh, that three and a half years ago, wherever it was, um, yeah. and showed me. And on the left was the house. What road is this called? Yeah, um, this Richmond is Terrace. Richmond, this is correct. Yeah, um, this is where the house was occupied. That Ferguson. Well, off. one of them. I think there was fifteen properties was selling off and claimed that there was, uh, you know problems was, with the buildings and absolutely. we showed that you know with actual video evidence that there was nothing wrong with it well it was interesting that when we pressed uh, one one of a, a number of people put in a freedom of information request uh, about the house mm. as for the surveyor's report mm. and the surveyor's report that came back for a house in in st paul's was 40 pages long very right. comprehensive mm. and prepared professionally mm. um and the uh, we had a half an A4 sheet of scribbled paper by some um, uh, surveyor, ostensibly for the council, mm. uh, that detailed nothing and mm. just said it was going to be 35 grand to do some work. Which one was it again? Uh, I believe it was 44, I could be wrong. 44, yeah. Um, uh, they built a, a, the activists built a, a, a pirate ship on the roof, it was awesome. Mm. Um, Ferguson nearly popped a zit because the police declined to uh, use their powers to uh, evict the protesters because mm. it was a political protest and not, so, not uh, an occupation. So I'm um, just thinking about that as well, you know, we've just seen uh, <coughs> XR, Extinction Rebellion, oh, yeah. um, in in the centre of uh, Bristol, in the town, yeah. in, the, in the city, sorry. Right next to all the nice coffee shops and eateries. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I chatted to one of the um, one of the rebels down there on College Green and asked about Avonmouth. And to be fair to him, he said he'd only been involved for three days, um, so he didn't really know. And he was also not from Bristol; he was from um, Totnes, uh, so he didn't really know what was going on. And when I mentioned Avonmouth and all the pollution and the dust and the flies and the incineration and everything else, he was surprised and shocked. I mean, to be fair to him, again. When I first come down to Waving Mouth three and a half years ago, I was surprised and shocked. I couldn't believe the stuff that I was being shown by by Steve. Yeah, not what would Clifton really... would Clifton put up with the same nonsense that Avon Mouth residents are having to? No, and, and the reason being is obviously people who live in Clifton are uh, uh, generally highly educated, uh, generally have been to you know good schools and know their rights and have the resources. Uh, to uphold their rights, whereas people in Avonmouth generally are working two jobs to pay the exorbitant council tax for mm. the services they do not get, um, and to you know justify Marbury's jetting all over the world, and the same with the last one, Fergsoid, you know. Yeah. So, so we're well, to the other side of this plant, we were right. talking about the day group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now the plants there on the left. It's less than. Sort of 250 meters from my house. That's just where we were a minute ago. Yeah, and, and what they do is they process um, incinerator bottom ash that's being sent across from um, Viridor in Wales, I think it is. They may have some other contracts as well. Mm. Um, and this appeared under permitted development rules until I challenged it and got them into a planning inquiry. Um, it w was worth noting immediately that we uh, entered the planning inquiry that they presiding local government officer stated that the, the last thing we would be doing would be uh, if you get a shot of that there, that's Sims Metal Management. Yeah, so that's where all the scrap metal comes in. So the plan inspector stated that they wouldn't actually be considering the merits of the application on planning. No, and, and immediately they said that you know, you could tell that there was absolutely no way we were going to win anything bar a few concessions. Now, mm. the concessions were that they had to go and redesign the plant, which cost them another, 
I believe it was a million and a half pounds, mm. and we're coming into the back of Sims Metal Management. So, and we'll, we'll discuss them at length in a minute because they burnt down yesterday again. How? Uh, well, we've yet to get the, the report of the cause of the fire, but. Uh, what, a bad fire? Yeah, there was a fair few appliances started at four o'clock in the morning. Right. Thousands of tons affected, although we don't know what yet was burnt, but you can guarantee that it was pretty friggin' hideous crap. Yeah. Um, and the Seven Side Sirens Trust didn't go off and alert the, the, the general population so, that less than 200 yards away there was a yeah. major fire of highly toxic chemicals. So what's this, I'm showing my uh, lack of knowledge on this, what's the Seven Side Sirens? Yeah, what's that? Well we were lucky enough that when Albright and Wilson exploded a number of years back we were like seconds away from being vaporised. Um, and uh, what came out of it was all of the major chemical companies mm. uh, established a charity um, where they put in early warning air raid sirens. Now mm. these are tested the third day of every month at 3 p.m. Loud? Oh yeah, yeah, loud enough to warn you that you know you're probably. I mean, the advice is stay indoors, lock all your doors and windows. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my advice would be get in your car and drive as fast as you can and get the fuck out of Avonmouth. Yeah. But, you know, that's because I know that the council and the environment agency are not fit for purpose and because there is so much money tied up with uh, the provision of council services with the polluting plants, mm. um, that they don't investigate. I mean, we were talking about, talking about the port quickly. I mean, I remember Steve telling me about, well, at the time, Ferguson had just done a, a deal with two of his merchant venturer friends, uh, right, Mordor and Ord. That's right. Um, and he'd sold it in a private meeting with no minutes for £10 million. Pounds. Yeah, which is about a tenth of what it's worth, at least. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, <coughs> all that sale allows them to do, and anywhere you see red fencing yeah. um, is Portland. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and to, to, to put this in perspective, a small acreage plot was sold on the foreshore down here mm. uh, for £8.6 million. Pounds. Yeah. Mm. Now, the port was at well over 2,000 hectares, mm. um, and it's a freehold of the port, so what that enables the port to do is generate um, uh, capital mm. to build their deep sea port. Okay. Yeah, once they get the deep sea port in there, 12 hours closer steaming than any other port. Um, to the main trade routes with China. Mm. Yeah, so it's win-win for the port. They get a lot more business because we become we become little Folkestone. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they make lots of money. Uh, you'll see both Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt uh, came to Bristol very recently and met up with the port. Strangely enough. Talking about the, the Tories, I, I remember this building here. I think just in front of me here. Um, I remember Steve telling me that there was that was a coal processing plant that Thatcher built or something do you that's right remember that they built that no, 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 no offense not saying do you remember it or not because you're a young man uh, like myself like well, you said <laughs> yeah I left school in 1984 so I remember precisely what Thatcher did yeah yeah um, mm. may she rot in hell mm. yeah she destroyed she tore the heart out of the uh, the mining industry so her and husband could make millions of pounds on the quiet mm. um, on his coal investments elsewhere yeah, mm. um, we're now moving into uh, briefly going back to the day group. So what they do is they process incinerator bottom ash and they turn it into aggregates that are used under road surfaces, breeze blocks, that kind of stuff for building. Mm -hmm. Which it's highly toxic shit. You can't use it anywhere that it's got um, a soft water area because it will permeate down to lichates and it will permeate through the ground and poison the aquifers. Yeah. Um, and, and what the Environment Agency done is they created this market for industrial waste uh, that can then be repurposed for building motorways and that kind of stuff and warehousing. Um, but unfortunately, once it becomes a product, the Environment Agency don't track it anymore. Mm. So when they knock this stuff down in 15, 20 years time, that then enters just landfill or whatever they're doing with waste at that point. Yeah? Mm. Uh, and then you're going to see large problems with um, people being poisoned. There was a, a, a company up in, or a council up in North Hants, I think it was, uh, and they were giving away this incinerator bottom ash aggregate to uh, local um, people with allotments. Mm. Yeah, we're then putting it down as, as paving mm. or paving, 
um, and making paths out of it, and it was then poisoning all their vegetables, and everybody started getting sick. Mm. Yeah, so the, the environment agency are well aware of the, the toxicity of this shit, and they're just trying mm. to bury it as, as turn it into a product so they don't have to track it and manage it going forward. Mm. Um, everyone gets paid, and it one hand washes the other. So, what yeah. We, yeah, what we got down here, um, we've got Sims Metal Management who take in all the Bristol City Council's waste. What's that here? Uh, that was the, the, the place that caught on fire. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they met with it previous, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, just to ask as well, I mean, it's Saturday today, so down here it's less busy than it usually is, or yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, this is normally, this is Biffa Bins on the where, on the left. What, these? Yeah. Uh, What's that then? That's. that's Looks like derelict. That is. That used to be a gypsum recycling, and I use the word recycling very loosely. Yeah. Uh, facility. Mm. Yeah. And what they were doing was just basically smashing up gypsum, uh, old plasterboards and stuff, mm. uh, and and recycling it. Yeah, selling it. But they were doing that in the open air. It was blown all over the roads. Mm. It's highly carcinogenic. It'll give you low cancer. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that's just one of the little delights. Now. If you look at the, the actual structure, and, and uh, I'll back up a bit actually so you can see a bit more of it. What you'll notice is massive holes in the sides of it. Yeah, that's what I thought it was derelicts or something. Yeah, mm. that's where bin lorries can drive in and out of it. Right. Yeah. Now there are four big holes down the side of that, and it's basically it's an open air tip mm. inside of it. Right. Yeah. I've got some drone footage of that you can have. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so. This is all biffa, biffa, biffa bins. They carry industrial waste, commercial waste, from household where? waste, from all over. For all, all over. over Bristol. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I believe they might take in some Weka stuff. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But over there, yonder, mm -hmm. you can see a big grey building. Yeah. That's newer solutions. Okay. Now newer solutions and Biffa are the two that have been polluting us with flies because they, they both uh, manufacture a, a thing called RDF, mm. refuse derived fuel, which is sent to Scandinavia and places to burn because they don't have any natural resources. Mm. And you know that's a, a fair use possibly if you like incineration. Look, I'm down to reuse and, and reduce yeah. myself. You know, mm. stop putting so much shit in packaging. Yeah. Um, and, and manage your waste locally as it should be managed, not ship it from all over the region mm. into Avonmouth, leave it festering outside for months on end mm. yeah, in packaging that's getting ripped to shit by seagulls and rats. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because there's a lot of seagulls flying around here at the moment. I don't yeah. know if the camera will pick them up or not. Again, I've got loads of footage. <laughs> yeah. If you look on roof over there, they're all basking. Right, yeah. Because yeah. they, they've basically got an unlimited food supply. Yeah. But you listen to... Uh, the officers from Bristol City Council or the Environment Agency, um, they say there's no food waste here. Well, painting there fucking is. Because the seagulls are yeah. swarming around there. Absolutely. Huh? So and you can see the same with swallows in later in the year, you know? Right, okay. Thousands of swallows. So if you're into seagulls or swallows, it's Yeah, right. it's, it's great, you know, come on down. Bring, um, that, bring a nose blood. So this, this turbine, it's yep. wind turbine, is it? Yeah. So what, what's, that, what's that doing? Do you know what that's... It's a wind park. That was financed by... Um, I th believe that one's Bristol City Council's, but that was financed mm. by Triodos Bank. That was where Steve and I ambushed George Ferguson when he was doing the ribbon cutting event. Mm. Have you seen the, the video? No. With, with the pig's head? Oh, no, I have seen that with the pig's head, yeah. Yeah. Well, I did it. I cut together a little montage of what happened on that day. It's 20 minutes long. Mm. I'll, I'll send you a link. Why do you, why, why do, you do the, thing, the things that you do? Just why? to highlight awareness, because... Yeah. You know, with the media in the city being ruthlessly controlled, yeah, there's only a couple of outlets it it, it tell them use. You've got the cable are coming on leaps and bounds. Mm. Yeah, I quite like quite crystal a lot cable. Of their yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they tackle some good issues. Mm. Um, that are outside the mainstream, you know, Nazi post Mike Norton kind of. Oh, let's do a story about ham and eggs and how it's the most wonderful thing in Bristol. You know, <laughs> mm. like, fuck off. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, you get the old reporter. It does one or two good things. Tristan does. Uh, Tristan, Cork, Tristan Cork, yeah, yeah. He, he used to do some good stuff. Michael Young was a good reporter. Yeah, he's gone now, though, isn't he? Michael yeah, he's Young. in Asia somewhere. I think. Fair play to him. Um, mm. You've you've then got uh, you know my favourite of all time, which is the Bristolian. Yeah. Yeah. Bit childish sometimes, but that's part of the charm. Mm. Love it. Mm. You know, they lamp some big boils um, mm. and. I believe, you know, pretty much every journalist in the city reads the Bristolian. Well, it's funny because when I was doing the mayor thing, I remember getting invited up to, <coughs> to White Ladies Road 
mm-hmm. and I was stood in the newsroom and we were chatting about local news and stuff and he was telling me what, you know how they get their information and one of the journalists in the newsroom said to me well because I said well I quite like the Bristolian actually he said yeah so do we that's where we get not all but some of our news but if we want to find out something a little bit deeper then we're going to the Bristolian for it <laughs> which I found a bit 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 mad not to be offensive to the Bristolian but the fact that a, a big organisation like BBC are going to a local ju- journalis, uh, well, that's journalism because, yeah, sort of. local, local journalists are actually doing the journalism and the BBC mm. are swanning from event to event with the great and the good pressing mm. the flesh mm. you know judging Chihuahua fucking racing or whatever you know where's that held well it, it, there's always some <laughs> down in Avon mouth ever no, no, there's always some <laughs> sausage fingered event going on somewhere in the country where you know <laughs> Rich people are shaking their jewelry, you know, yeah, yeah. racing their whippets. And, <laughs> but, but you know, all that aside, the, yeah. the media is ruthlessly controlled. What I do, what I do, is I try and make little films that prick balloons of the great and powerful because they're tossers, most of them. Mm. Yeah, and I try and highlight. Uh, who's this? Don't know. No, no, I'm just chatting, mate. Are you working here? No, no, just chatting. Are you waiting for? Oh no, no, we're no, no, okay. No, we're, we're just having a we're chat. Just chatting. Cheers, mate. Yeah, they, they're quite spooked out by me down here. I come down here quite regularly. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, normally what I do is I pull up over there with my car on the pavement, and then I set my tripod up, and I get my camera out, and I put my long lens on so they can see me, you know? Yeah. And I'll stand there for about half an hour taking some photos. Mm. Well, fair play to you, mate. They, they yeah. get the paranoid and come out and say, what, what are you photographing? I'm, yeah. I'm photographing you breaking the law, mate. You know? Yeah. You know, get some fucking doors on there. Yeah. Spray your waste. Yeah. Manage your waste. So why well. haven't they? I mean, that's, that sounds quite a simple thing. Surely they, it costs uh, money. Yeah. 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 Well, fair pay to you, mate. You know, and that's why I wanted to come down today, really. And you know, we've only touched on a couple of bits. Yeah. Right. Newer solutions. Yeah. Yeah. You have the local MP. Well, last year we had Kai Dud saying, "Oh, there's no problem there." Yeah. Kai Dud, who's he was the cabinet member for waste. It's now Steve, Mister Invisible Pierce. Yeah, okay. Who, who's not engaging at all about the pollution issues. Mm. Yeah, because basically you'd have to do something if they recognise it, and they don't want to be doing that. Mm. Uh, because it's all Bristol City Council waste that goes in there, and Weka waste. Yeah, the West of England Mine Authority. So you got yeah. North North Bristol. Uh, sorry, Bristol, North uh, Bath and East of Somerset. Yeah, mm. um, basically the four councils are sending their waste here. Yeah, saving hundreds of thousands of pounds on landfill tax. Mm. Yeah, um, in fact, millions. You know, it was a ten-year contract they just signed now with Virador, which means that New Earth lost the contract. They'll just backfill that with other, mm. with other um, uh, contracts. Yeah, and they're still good. They found five thousand bales of shit on site after you know somebody posted me a video mm. uh, on the day that I was with, on Jar Darvel show about uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And it const- it proved that basically our MP was full of shit, yeah. Cause that's Darren, Darren, Darren Jones, Darren Absent Jones, yeah, mm. yeah. Because he said he's been down here. There's no storage outside. Everything's being done, yeah. And 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 it was fine, yeah. He, Kai Dud last year said everything was fine. Me and Lisa came down here, stood up on that big tump of shit there, which is a buried. Um, incinerator, oh, sorry, that buried uh, lead smelter plant that they don't know what to do with, so they just right. buried it. Right. You know, you've got people from Australia phoning me up going, We got one of them, how did you get rid of yours? And I'm, I'm saying, Well, they just buried it. They're, they're like, You're having a fucking laugh, aren't mm. you? What, this, oh, this you, green yeah, that mass- Teletubby it's Hill? It's massive, it's right. massive, mate. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a, a lead um, smelter, yeah. basically underground, poisoning everything. But mm. that aside, Mm. Right, so you've got newer solution 320,000 tonnes of Weka waste coming in every year. That's now going to go down to the Virador plant, I'll show you that in a minute. Mm. And that stack is now being recommissioned because it exploded back in 2015. They had another fire there because yeah, it's not being managed correctly. Yeah, that video on the afternoon of the John Darwell show proved that the MP was lying, proved that the Environment Agency was lying, proved that Bristol City Council was lying. And they got caught bang at it. Mm. Yeah, five thousand bales outside. Mm. Three and a half thousand. We were we were informed by the environment agency went out last week on a boat. So uh, so what so what when you say they lied about what what? Well, they said there was no storage outside. Right. So it's supposed supposedly inside. Yeah. Locked away, sort of thing. Yeah, and, it, behind closed doors and kept sprayed. Excuse the pun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it wasn't. 
Well, obviously, because it had been outside for months. Mm. Yeah, so they, they ran away with three and a half thousand tons of it overnight, literally on land trains, i.e., getting it on back of lorries from here, mm. shipping it up to the ship and getting it out, and then sending the ship out within 24 hours. Taken to where? Do you have any idea? Uh, I think that one went to Scandinavia somewhere. Right. Yeah. Right. But they're stockpiling it for months. They're lying through their teeth. They got caught with their pants down. Media are absolutely silent. Mm. Yeah. Apart from people like the Bristolian. Mm. Apart from people like the Cable. Apart from people like Real Bristol News. Mm. You know? And it's kind of depressing. Mm. So that's why I do what I do. Mm. You know? I'm not liked by various members of the establishment. And that suits me to the ground. Yeah. You know? Because it's corruption. Mm. If you or I did it, you'd be banged up. Mm. Yeah, so I'll see if we can come down now to Vera Dorsal. We'll take the long way out and you'll okay. start seeing where all the new incinerators have been built. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you look there, you see door number nine, I think it is, is, is open on the Earth Solution. Oh, yeah. Let me just zoom in on that a minute. Just stop a minute. Yeah, I see. Yeah, so that's wide open. Yeah. And guess what's going to be coming out of there? Flies? Yeah, strangely enough. Yeah. You wouldn't think that, would you? From no. Like so, I mean, those turbines blowing in the back, in, from the background, is that, so again, excuse my ignorance, is that, would that be blowing the flies this in this direction or not? No, it's good. The wind's going the opposite way. Yeah, so ah, right. Of course, of course. Wind, yeah? Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't do very well in science, mate, at school, I have to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, there we go. I got a double F in science. All right. So I'll have to trust your word for it, mate, because uh, <laughs> not my strong subject. What do you think of a fan when you're holding a fan? Oh, don't. <laughs> a, a child's fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what you get when you're a three-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> From Poundland. Well, possibly. Yeah. Uh, other outlets are available. Okay. <laughs> oh, mate. So yeah, this, this little chunk belongs to a company called Access 18. Okay. Yeah, now they bought it purportedly for a pound. Oh, yeah. right. Now, bear in mind the proximity of the port. You can't get much for a pound these days either. Well, they they bought it for a pound, but they had to remediate the land. Just just for the just for the benefit of the tape, because it's we haven't got smell o vision. It's just a weird smell down here at the moment. I don't know what I don't know if you can smell that as well. Uh, well. Yeah, it's, it's poss like, possibly something. Like plastic burning to me. Well, the, the wind's coming from that way, so if it is, it's something on the dock yeah. or possibly further afield, mm. like. Um, uh, over over the water at Cardiff, right? Yeah, because there's a big incinerator over there, which is the one that's feeding um, 110,000 tons of incinerator bottom ash to mm. um, the day group. All right, okay. Yeah, who got their planning permission? Well, they didn't get planning permission, really. You know, because planning doesn't planning law doesn't apply in Edinburgh right, if you're very rich. Mm. What's um, this big building here? Um, what, the cold yeah. store or oh, the one behind? Yeah, the one behind it, yeah. That's an old flour mill. Okay. Yeah, so basically you get thousands of tons a week coming in on the ship. Yeah. Yeah, and then it used to go in there back in the 40s and 50s, in there and get ground up and turned into flour, which was then bagged and shipped onward, you mm -hmm. know, either by boat or by uh, motorway and lorry. Well, and that's empty now, is it? Yeah, they, they can't knock that down because uh, it's got bats living in it. Bats get protected. The, People don't. Right. This was the coal terminal that we were talking about. The Thatcher one. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So Thatcher basically broke the unions, yeah, uh, and the dockers, mm. and brought in cheap labour. This is the other side. The yeah, it's all holes in the side of it. Yeah, it's all asbestos as well, though. Yeah. Right. So there's big Asda here as well. I remember Steve mentioning yeah, this when we were I down would, here. I wouldn't eat from Asda's fresh section, mate. It's covered in fucking flies. It's got to be. The same That's the distribution centre, isn't it? For uh... Yeah, it comes, you get stuff coming from like all over the world there. Mm. Um, it's also a regional distribution I, hub. I'm just going to ask you about that, because I remember Steve, we, we touched upon it. Like, basically, he was talking about a deep water terminal. Yeah. So the whole point of the merchant venture is wanting the stop me if I get this wrong at any point, but the whole the freehold was so they could build this deep water terminal. Has that happened yet? No. No, not yet. No, purely because uh, China's in a bit of economic trouble. Okay. Um, it's the conditions aren't favourable for them to make a shit ton of money. They can still make a ton of money, mm. but not a shit ton of money. You know. Mm. 
Because the, the, the way that these people work is they get other people to pay for it. Yeah, that's nice. Well, it's <laughs> the way of the rich, isn't it? Mm. You come up with the idea, they give you money to do it, you then walk away with all the profit. Mm. So that, I mean, because I remember Steve saying to me about this, he said basically, you know, they'll bring, um, what are they called? The containers. Containers in on ferry or whatever. On like uh, unbelievable massive, yeah. massive Chinese ships. Yeah. yeah, and then they just pop over here. To say, for example, as the distribution. Yeah, well, they got their own dedicated um, junction going in on the M forty nine M four. Ah, so that's an, uh, it's interesting because I remember Steve showing me that, and there was a tar factory. It wasn't yeah, it, was like, it wasn't built at that point. Is it? Is that built now? Yeah, you can see a stack of it. From here. What down, down the end of this it's road? To white stacks. Oh, right, is that it, is it? That's on a roundabout, isn't it, yeah? Okay. Seems a little trip round there. So all this is just like, you can imagine some warehouses, you can do anything in there. The Redmond Bakery. Not because they don't make delicious pastries, but... <laughs> Other pastries available? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Other other bakeries, not necessarily named after Redland or Relatable. See, I mean, this is a whole little recycling hub. Right. Like this. Pallets purchased. Yeah, so a pallet yard in there, basically, and a bunch okay. of other stuff. Uh, to your left, you've got metal recycling. Then you've got, we're going up on the Holmesmouth Bridge to be able to see a little bit better from right there. Okay. Recycling, this is the... Is that clinical waste, the yellow bins? I think it might be, yeah. We have SRCL. I'll have to look normally, isn't it? The yellow bins are normally hospital Sharks bins, aren't they? Or, yeah. Yeah, stericycle, yeah. Yeah. So you're going to have body parts, you're going to have fucking dressing. Yeah. Tumors, the bits they don't want to look at, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, fantastic. Feels like a roller coaster in this bit now. We might get security to start chasing us in a bit. Quite used to doing that. Now. No parking, no photography. We can't let you see what we're up to. He's aware all your petrol tankers come to fill up. Mm before they go off to distribute. Yeah, this is why the Seven Side Sirens are putting. So, so a lot of people are making money from, from oh, you know, in Avonmouth. Oh, it's, it's telephone numbers, mate, because it's a yeah. great economic driver of Bristol. But how about the people of Avonmouth? I mean, are they kind of, not you know what I mean, like being compensated for the Yeah, for yeah, the they dust come up with that great for... idea. It's called CIL, wasn't it? Community Infrastructure Levy. Okay. Yeah, so the community infrastructure levy is when a developer develops, yeah, they've got to put a proportion of the cost to that local community into funds for that local community. Mm. So you've seen all this development down here, you know, millions and millions of pounds worth. That's a lot of CIL money, yeah? Mm. Guess what they did last year? Go on. Um, for the purposes of allocation of CIL money, they twinned Avonmouth with Clifton and Henry's. What's what's in what's um which means what have they got Clifton, in common? Clifton and Hughes obviously yeah. have so much development like Avonmouth that mm. they should have equal access to our funding. But being as they've got better projects, more heritage type stuff, who do you think gets a bulk of the money? Mm. I mean that is just yeah gross, isn't it? You yeah, know, totally, yeah, you can you can dive ten years younger in Avonmouth than anywhere else in Bristol because of all the shit we're putting down there. Mm. But actually those nice people in Clifton and Henley's, who are the people we need to actually get into power as political um, candidates, suddenly get all the money. Mm. It's not enough to go around nicking the fucking land folks, is it? No? Um, oh yeah, moving them up to Clifton. No, that yeah, happened exactly. for St. Paul's as well. No, they've done it for every, every bit of heritage anywhere in the city. Yeah. Yeah, they want it. Mm. Because it makes Clifton and Redland and Henleys and the rest of it look better. Mm. Whereas you just get fucking industrial bullshit architecture mm. with spikes on it so you can't even fucking lie on it if you've got a house like that. Mm. I 
Well, we'll come up to that in a minute here as you time out your mind. Oh, this, so this, yeah, I remember this. This was being built at the time when Steve showed me round, actually. It was still a few months away, I think six months away from completion. So the, I mean, I remember him explaining it to me as being, they're building a, a road or something. Like, do you, what, what, why, why is the tar factory here? Well, because of the new M49 junction. Yeah, the amount of road building and places that they're, they're uh, reclaiming for industrial land all needs roads mm. and it's right on the junction of the new motorway mm. yeah so it's straight out of here straight onto the new junction Wainwright right. there's something they're building over there I don't know what that is it looks pretty huge so it's got to be something to burn something or a mm. just stack on it could just be Freight terminal on the other side of the dock. Steve mentioned to me about a guy who sells catering equipment, Pete and Nesbitt Nisbet. or something. Is he still they're still down here, are they? Nisbet? Yeah, yeah. Mm. That looks like all aggregate, so it could be bottom ash recycling that mm. side. Mm. Could be wrong. It could be just what they're using. That like, could be what they're using for the bitumen. I don't know. Right, okay. I don't know enough about bitumen manufacturer. Mm. I know it's to deal with um, oil and mm. get it out from basically crude oil, I believe, and mix it with other reagents and form some kind of weird fucking plasticine. Mm. The story that I have read Is a lot in, in, in Avonmouth has been about the flies and stuff. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, well, and I mean, I, I had a fly in my room the other day and it was driving me mental because it just was going round and round. I mean, what's what's it like in, in your house, for example, uh, or, or a friend's house? It's horrible. Because I, 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 when I come round your house earlier, Ian, I looked up and I noticed the, the fly tape hanging up. And it was, I, I'd for, forgotten about it, but there was probably, I don't know how many flies on there, 80 flies, I reckon? So All different sizes. Three days. You change that quite often. Yeah, well, I change it as soon as I can't fucking stand it anymore. Yeah. You know? Mm. But you've got, to, you've got to get value for money. Yeah, or get yeah. it completely full before you. Well, as much as possible. You yeah, because they don't they don't last that long. Right. Before they're that covered. Yeah. Yeah. They're still good and sticky. Most people could afford to leave one up for like two weeks and get three or four flies on it. Mm. Yeah. I get twenty or thirty a day. This is all the old Boomerco site. Yeah. So this is now Veolia. So I've got some twat on my trumpet. Um, this is now Veolia because the day after Boomerco went into administration. Uh, Oliver Latter went to work for Veolia. Who's that? Oliver Latter he was the boss of Boonico, which is where the 2012 yeah. uh, and 13 fly issues came from. Mm. So that's now Veolia. Yeah? Yeah. Now just here on the left, let's see if I can pull in this one. No, it's not, but I'll pull back out in a second. This is why I keep getting punctured in my tires. <laughs> Yeah, just down here on the left are all the van dwellers that Marvin Reese kicked out. From Greenbank? Yeah. They got told to move down here. Now this is probably some of the most polluted land in Europe. Here they are. Right here. Yeah. yeah, what a way to live. Under the shadow of some wind turbines, okay, not too bad. Out of sight, out of mind though. Absolutely. Again. So they're two cities, isn't it? Yeah. So there are all these poor bastards are down here. That's an incinerator that's being built across the road. Burning what? Uh, that Oof. one will be household waste, I believe. What, just from Bristol? Or? No, no, from all over the shop, innit? You know, we've got um, 110,000 110, tonnes from Kensington and, and five other London boroughs, mm. rich areas in London. Uh, we've got 40,000 tonnes coming over from Monmouth mm. um, and there's other stuff coming in the pipeline, you know. Uh, I reckon you're going to have between one and a half million to nearly two million tonnes of waste processing by incineration in Avonmouth every year. So, so how, much, how much? Nearly between one and a half to two million tonnes per annum mm. of incineration. 
and that is not counted in the clean air plan. Yeah, mm. it's not counted as a carbon emission. Mm. So yeah. XR, XR, these, these should, be, should be down here, really. Yeah, yeah, give a shit, mate. Yeah. I've been on them for months. Yeah. Yeah, it comes wave mouth and see what you're missing. Mm. You know, if you're going to make a difference, you need to start making a difference in places like this. Yeah. Because all the XR thing is, is, is all about carbon neutral, mm. which just means let's keep pumping, keep burning the planet, keep generating as much waste, yeah, and increase that year on year on year, and then offset the cost of that in carbon taxes to the companies so that you can then dump that waste in poorer areas. All over the world. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, well that's the things that we see on on, uh, on television and stuff, places like Indonesia and things, yeah, where they're actually sending it back. Send, send, yeah, sending it back. That's mm. right, mm. carbon trading is a cost. I just think that we should be looking at these things deeper really, you know, like... Well, capitalism is dead, isn't it? That's what this whole new green deal bullshit's about. Yeah. Yeah, it's about the next industrial revolution for the, from the people that sold you the last the great industrial revolution. Mm. It's the same shit, different day, greenwashed. Yeah? Mm. So, oh, it's okay, Unilever, you know, one of the most fucking polluting organisations on the planet, and, and the Bill Gates Foundation, and uh, uh, Al Gore's climate trading bullshit. Mm. You know, they, they basically want to secure billions of pounds to Seabank um, <coughs> Paris, so that's uh, LPG. Okay. Yeah, liquid petroleum gas that comes in off of boats uh, that moor up in the channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bringing it in from Japan and things like that. So we're going into South Gloss now as well. Yeah, yeah? This, this, is, uh, this is how they get around a lot of the planning bullshit as well. Okay. They'll build it in South Gloucestershire, right on the border of Ravenmouth, basically right. Bristol based, yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll go in there in a bit because you can see all the uh, bottom ash if you come back. Okay. This is all the old ICI site. So remember Bhopal in India? Yeah. Yeah, they uh, had a, an ammonia facility. It was operated by Union Carbide. Or yeah. By Union Carbide. Yeah. We had one down here. Mm. Um, and this is chemical the, chemical works. Yeah, then, ICI, yeah. yeah. Imperial chemicals. And this is, I, as I remember, this is the place that Steve told me was some of the most polluted land. Yeah, I mean that's all it's in Ritter Bottom House there. Mm -hmm. Avara Pharmaceutical Services. Yeah. Well, I believe they are. Uh... I know it's an obvious question, but how are they getting away with that? Oh, it's telephone numbers will make some money. Yeah. Quartet Foundation, if you want to operate a charitable institution anywhere in this locality, you've got to have backing. Mm. The only way you'll get backing is if the merchants order a subset of. Uh, lackeys from the various organisations they support support you mm. you're fucking dead in the water mm. you know so and the local councillors they get loads of money for for lo little causes that they want to appear you know they take little old ladies out for lunch clubs mm. yeah um, they get trousers and thousands of pounds for little pet projects so they're they're seen as doing stuff for their electorate Mm. Yeah, and uh, they get elected. That's how it all happens, and then they turn a blind eye. So mm. planning and all this, you know, our very own Donald um, Alexander, yeah, or Donald who? Donald Trumpton, as I like to call him. How, who's he? He's the uh, Labour councillor for Avonmouth. Yeah, mm. comes from Sea Mills. You know, the only time he's in Avonmouth is when he wants to get a, a press opportunity or to uh, to attend the local church. You know, mm. he's another religious nutter. Mm. You know, I ain't got no problem with people being religious and nutters, but when they try and influence local politics using it, I do. Mm. You know, um, now Don Alexander, uh, last year when I put the FOI in about all communications between the Environment Agency, Bristol City Council, Bristol City Council officers, the Mayor's office, mm. and the local MP regarding that newer solutions issue last year, which never happened, you know, according to the Council and the EA. Um, you had an email from Don saying, oh, don't worry, it'll all blow, it'll blow over. Quite literally. Yeah, literally. Mm. Yeah? It's like, well, don't worry about it. You know, they can sit and live getting crawled over by flies. Mm. You know, in every room in my house, my, my, my day generally starts at 6 a.m., yeah? Mm. 
uh, unless it's a bit warm the night before, it can start as early as half past four when I get two flies fucking in my ear, you know? Mm. Which is quite an awakening experience, I can tell you. I, yeah? I'm sorry, to, I'm not, I'm laughing out. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable with that. I, I don't mean, mean I yeah, but I'm just dick. saying, I'm, you know, for me, I'm living over in Southmead. I, like I said, I have a, had a fly a couple of nights ago flying around my room, and it was just, an, but to have so many, yeah, well, I, I don't, mean, I don't mean to be, yeah, it's, it's fucking horrible, yeah. yeah? And, and we're but I guess humour's the, where you get through it as well. Yeah, and, and making little films and turning yeah. up and, and yeah. being a pain in the ass to, to security of these places. Yeah. You know? and driving on site and taking film I shouldn't take film off as mm. far as they're concerned because it proves they're lying. Mm. It proves that your local councillors are lying. Mm. Yeah, so we got uh, Donald Trumpton and then we got Victoria Wooden, who's um, uh, Joe Sargent. She lives in Redland. Yeah, intellectually, she's quite sharp. But she does. She wants to be an MP, mm. but she ain't doing the talk, you know, and walking the walk. Mm. She's quite happy to go and to uh, jam and tea and scone events, but she's not so happy to come here, mm. yeah, and fight on our corner. So you say to come here. She's she's representing Avonmouth, is that yeah, right? Yeah, she lives in Redland. But she lives in Redland, yeah. right? Okay. You know, got a grip on all the local. Problems. That's the way the Labour Party run, isn't it? Parachuting people in and yeah, exactly. You get you get told, oh, you may come from I don't know Arkcliffe, for example. Yeah. But we want you to go and support Southmead. What fucking use is that? Yeah. Yeah, you don't know the local area. So, you don't know the local issues. I mean, this is massive. This one here. So this is Amazon. Yeah, oh yeah. That's what I'm saying. Billions of pounds. Yeah. Yeah, you can guarantee they ain't paid much tax. They might have even got a grant to move here. Yeah. Well, it happened in Wales, didn't they? they? Built their own road. It's called Amazon Way. I think it's just outside of Cardiff, I think. They've built their own special road. Similar to what happened at Nes Nesbitt's or yep. Nesbitt's place, they built their own special access road. Yeah. Yeah. It's all paper recycling by the look of it. And it makes sense for somebody an operator like Amazon, mm. even though they're shit bags and treat their employees like crap. You know, don't use them if you can help it. Um, that large companies do their own recycling that's on site mm. as much as possible. Mm. You know. Yeah. And then they'll send that off to proper recycling facilities. Mm -hmm. Whereas Bristol City Council and Aweka, they'll sign a commercial contract with somebody like Veolia or. Or uh, Virador, mm. yeah, and they'll say we'll give you two hundred thousand tons a year um, of stuff that we can't recycle, and you can burn it. Mm. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, cheers for that. We'll give you ninety-three million pounds, for example, ten years contract for the weather I've just gone through. Mm. But then, if they can't supply that amount of refuse mm. because people are recycling more, yeah, what they do is they get the recycling stuff. And they chuck it in with the normal rubbish. I've heard about this. Someone posted a photo on Twitter the other night, actually, showing like refuse. The, sorry, the recycling collectors picking it up and it Chucking was all it mixed in the same, bin. In the same thing. Yeah. Off it goes to be burnt. Yeah. Because they've got a commercial contract, they must supply them or they get fined. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because then they've got to run their incinerator at a lower efficiency. If they've got a lower efficiency and it's not as hot, and you've got more fucking dioxins and bullshit fuel and stuff coming out the top. Yeah. So yeah. I can, I can, I can. Do you know? I can. I'm st st chatting to you today, and I, I can, I can understand why people like Darren Jones, for example, are. Well, I would imagine he's quite worried to be have to have someone like yourself down here pointing out these things, and not 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 a lot happen happening from 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 their end. But the thing I don't really understand is why why not? Why aren't they? Why aren't they doing it? Why aren't they doing anything? And again, it's like campaign donations. Yeah, yeah. You think for one second, Darren Jones? I mean, he's universally loathed within the CLP from my understanding yeah um, he's about as popular as Bob Murray at Blue Flux Clamory revival with the people of Avonway mm. right and the surrounding areas because they're just le they're just standing up on TV saying there is no problem it's like the council officers there is no problem it's just a normal level of flies for fucking where 
a slaughterhouse in Senegal, mm. you know? It ain't normal. Mm. Yeah, we know it's not normal. We've pointed out where the problems are because we've gone and fucking traced it, you know? Mm. And we've got people that tell us things, you know, that work in these industries. They're whistleblowing to us because they can't do it in their own organizations because they'll never work again, mm. you know? So they come to us and it's like, well, you know, this company, for example, aren't doing X, Y, and Z. And we'll then start going and looking at that. And, you know, where's the problem? What is it doing? We feed that onto the local councillors, feed it onto the environment agency, feed it onto the friggin' Bristol City Council. And what we get back is people like your Neil Mags on Twitter from the, the Evening Post going, well, how do we know that's all rubbish and all those bells are at New Earth Solutions that process 320 fucking thousand tons of rubbish a year? What the fuck else do you think it is? You know? Mm. Yeah, but what it's doing is it's just trying to give plausible deniability and taking away the weight of the message. Mm. Yeah, which is these fuckers are breaking the law and you know about it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and as a journalist, you're doing fuck all about it. But, you know, Mr. Max is well tied up with Don Alexander, the, the Reverend's anal dental work fucking technician. Yeah, he's so far up his ass is unbelievable. Yeah, because he wants to be uh, a cabinet member and, and he's tied up on two merchant venture um, boards. You know, he sits on the Downs Committee mm. yeah, and he sits on the, uh, the Port Benevolent Fund. Mm. Yeah, which is why we get nothing from him. And, and the previous conservative incumbent, um, Wayne Harvey, hmm. going back to the Boomerco issues in 2012, you know, he was the local non-executive director for Bristol City Council. He's a local councillor for Bristol City Council and the Avonmouth area, yeah. And he was also an engineering board on the dock, hmm. yeah. So there's a massive conflict of interest that he worked for the dock whilst supposedly keeping them working within the law, yeah, and ensuring they did stuff correctly. Yeah, and massive conflict of interest there. Plus, as local councillor, he was, you know, duty bound to investigate the issues that we were having with the flies, mm. and he wasn't, yeah, because he worked for the port. Mm. Yeah, and then he was replaced by Clive Stevens from the Green Party. Okay. Interestingly, mm. yeah. So I wrote to Clive, and I'm like, Clive, we've just got rid of one wanker extra, you know, ex um, councillor, yeah. Can you please take a look at what the doctors are doing? He's like, yeah, I'll, and I let him roam a big list of issues, you know, because my emails can be quite exhaustive mm. um, because they cover quite a lot of things. And, and I set out fully what the issues were, fully where, where you know, the issues needed to be addressed. Mm. And he, as the non-executive director, was duty-bound to take that support. I got all nice smiles from him. This is a, an incinerator, strangely enough. Yeah, I got all nice smiles from him. And then... Uh, I got an email a couple of weeks later saying, oh, I need to concentrate on, on being a non-executive director. I can't really discuss this with you. It then transpires that he had to resign his posi position as non-executive director because the port it basically forced him to sign a gagging clause. Mm. They said he couldn't discuss with, with Bristol City Council and the people of Bristol the operations of the port. And that's interfering, that's incinerator bomb ash. That's interfering with a, a serving non-executive director in a local government role mm. by a private business. You know, that's got to be against the law. Mm. Yeah? So that, sorry, it's just for the for the video, so that, that's bottom ash. Yeah. That's just the water, all the stuff that they've... Burnt. And then it's just the, what's left over, yeah. cremated sort of thing. That's exactly it. Yeah. You know, you don't. So why isn't that covered? Shouldn't that be covered over or something? Well, it's in a windrow, which is oh, you know, right. which is a bonus because when they first tried it with the uh, day group, their first design didn't include windrows. What they were going to do was basically stick just piles of bottom ash mm. on a dock, which gets blasted with sixty mile an hour winds, mm. like two hundred and fifty uh, meters from my house. Mm. <laughs> You know, and this stuff's fucking poisonous, sort of mm. gone in a big loop the other way now, yeah? Yeah. I'll turn back around in a minute. But it's just to give, you know, you, you and your viewers a sense of scale. Mm. Yeah, because you will in a minute. Well, we've still got plenty of places to go. We're only about halfway round us. And we're already an hour into the video. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. If you need to charge, I've got a port. Okay, right then. yeah. So this is a range, big, uh, that's an iPhone port. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. You've got so, your other one? I've got mine in my bag. It'll be all right for now, anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, there's gas works here? Uh, What's that? Those are, yeah, I believe those are storage tanks for either fuel oil. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, so you bought drive up in, into Hallett, which yeah. is where the other side of those are. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so it's either fuel oil um, or it's uh, LPG or it's uh, aircraft fuel. Mm -hmm. One of the three. So these are where all the logistics people are moving in now because obviously if they've got a nice big storage area available to get stuff in on a container, they can chuck it straight on the M4, you know? Mm. M49, M4, M5. Gateway to the south, uh, sorry, to the west. So from this side, you can see the scale of that incinerator next mm. to the power station, mm. or next to the two power stations. Want me to take a break at any point? No, you tired. carry on. You carry on. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just generally drive around and babble, and then you can do what. Yeah. Um, I tend not to. I do, well, in my previous videos, I tended not to edit at all. Just put it up as it is, and you know, just so there's no. Yeah, there's no editing. You know what I mean? People can see. Number exactly one, it was, yeah. yeah. Number one, they can see what it was. What number two, yeah. I have very poor editing skills. So that's my excuse. Fair enough. <laughs> and, and I've edited a number of videos, so I mm. know how long it takes, you know? Yeah, no, I've, and I've seen seen a few of your videos, um, especially the drone footage I thought was well, very you know, interesting. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not a, a physically well man. I've got a bad back. Mm. I can't walk very far at all. Mm. And uh, it's a nice, easy way for me to keep checks on these installations where I'm being told by the environment agency, no, there aren't any bells outside, and yet all of a sudden I find 5,000 of them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I get told by Bristol City Council, no, there isn't a problem on the dock with X, Y, and Z, and then I go and look, and there is. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about incinerator bottom ash and windrows. In reality, um, this is not a slight of scientific importance, although I think they're a bit high. They should be below the wall level, really. Yeah, because everything above the wall, obviously, would be... Subject to wind. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, when a couple of years ago on the docks, they, you've got aggregate companies importing things like powdered um, granite, mm -hmm. yeah, and just dumping it out on the side of the dock, yeah. And, and whenever the, a planning application goes in for the dock to uh, Bristol City Council, they always use um, data from Bristol Airport, which is in a different fucking county, mm -hmm. different elevation and aspect, mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas they've got a fully um, operational weather station in the dock mm. because they're a fucking dock mm. you know they got the best in the world there but they won't use that information in the plan application because then it raises questions like well if you get a 60 mile hour wind there why don't you put a windrow because that costs money right? it's the bottom line you know profit mm. yeah, and you get the, the usual bullshit from the environment agency of Bristol City Council saying oh but they're using best available techniques mm. yeah which the best available technique, technique principle in law is that if you're a small one-man band, yeah, for you to operate, say, a scrapyard, yeah, your resources to go out and spend a quarter of a million pounds on a rolling hammer, yeah, ain't going to cut it. Mm. Whereas a company like Sin Metal Management could go out and spend a quarter of a million pounds on a rolling hammer due to the size of their organisation and the resources they got, yeah. Mm. So compliance with environmental permits is gradiated dependent on the best available techniques to the operator yeah because what people don't realize is the environment agency aren't there to protect the environment at all 